Hi, it's Lori F. Dean and welcome to video number six, step number four on your transformational journey, a practical and powerful path to get you out of sedation and into a life of sizzle to help you reclaim and unleash the bold, brilliant and bountiful being that you are meant to be. We've come a long way, we've covered a lot of ground and we are three quarters of the way through the path. We started on step number one, which was connection, being connected to the source of all life. We talked about what that meant in terms of spirit and soul purpose. We discussed your very own soul purpose and what that meant in terms of clarifying your unique blueprint, your unique map, your unique contract that was born with you into the world. We talked about how to figure all that out. We also talked about conceding because once you've clarified and once you know you're connected there are certain things that you just have to surrender that just do not work for you anymore that will not get you transforming get you going forward on the journey get you to the place of paradise to the place of being a dynamo the very raw real and unique dynamo that you came here to be so we've talked about those three in a lot of detail. We've given you tools for your toolbox to fill up along the way to help you work through those steps. And today we're going to continue with the final step, step number four, which is create. Here is where you get to create your very own dynamo, taking everything that you've gathered so far in your toolbox adding some of the things we're going to put into the toolbox today and get you well on your way. Okay? Want to start? Okay, let's go. So I mentioned create. Now creation is different than being told, I'm going to do something. If there are people in your life who come and, and should and shouldn't all over you and say you should do this, you shouldn't do that, and if you are used to accepting their word as gospel, this can be a very difficult stage for you because this is all about knowing, knowing for yourself exactly who you are and exactly how to create the life that you are destined to lead. We talked about all of the ways to get there. We talked about some of the things you'd have to give up along the way, and that included some of these toxic relationships, some of the relationships that just don't work anymore, some of the beliefs in your system that just don't work anymore. They are limited. They have kept you stuck. We talked about judgments. We talked about Byron Katie's the work and her, her process of getting, getting out the judgments against others. And I encouraged you at that point not to put the judgments on yourself because we've been dumping on ourselves for so long that that can almost seem overwhelming and it might be difficult to get beyond the judging of yourself to get to the bottom core of it all by starting with yourself. However, hopefully you've had enough practice with the worksheets judging others that you are willing to consider turning it on yourself without shame, without blame, without condemnation, but just as a way of uncovering who you are, as un helping to uncover your soul purpose and helping you to create. Okay, let's look at some of the things and questions that you can ask because as you know right now, I am big on getting you to ask better questions. Ask better questions of yourself and trusting that you have the answers, that the answers are right within you, in your spirit, that they came here with you as part of your soul purpose map. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of the questions. I, I'm actually moved this one down here. I thought we would talk about that at the end, but... Skills. What are my specific, specific skills? What are my specific things that I am good at right now in my life? And you may have trouble with this. You may have dumped on yourself so much to think, I'm not good at anything. If that is where you're coming from, I challenge you to do the work on yourself. I challenge that judgment of yourself. I'm not good at anything. Is it true? How do I know it's true? How do I feel when I believe that it's true? Who would I be without that thought? 
Those are the four key questions in Byron Katie's The Work, and I invite you to put that towards any judgment you may have about yourself, including, I have no skills, I have no talents, I have no blah, 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 okay? Once you've done that and you realize you do have skills, I want you to start thinking about what they are and making a list in your diary, in your journal. What skills do you have very, very specifically? Are you good with numbers? Are you good at speaking to people? Are you a good listener? Those are just a few. I know there are many. And you will likely have a long list. You will surprise yourself if you are honest. And don't worry about modesty, false modesty. Be honest with yourself. So write down these skills. Be emboldened and energized by what you come up with. I want, then I want you to do the same thing with your talents. What are my specific talents? What have other people commended you for? For example, if someone says, wow, you are really good at accessorizing. I, I wish I could do that. How do you know to put together this and this and this? And you might think, well, I don't know. I just do. But that could be a talent. Generally, when we have unique talents, we assume that everybody can do what we can do. So we don't feel that it's very unique to us. For example, when I started in radio, I told you the story of how I was called up by the radio station and they said, we'd like to have you join the team, and I thought they were absolutely bonkers. I knew nothing about being on the radio whatsoever, or so I thought. I thought, I don't have any talent for this kind of job. They told me that they thought I did, and they outlined the, the talents, the skills, the personality that they thought would work well in their environment. Now, to me, I just assumed everybody had a big mouth, everybody liked to talk, everybody got expressive when they communicated, whether it was in person or over the radio airwaves. I just assumed everybody had that in them. And some people chose not to behave that way and others didn't. But what I didn't realize, and it had to be pointed out to me, that that was a talent, one of my unique talents. And I challenge you to find yours. And perhaps if you just are really stuck, go and ask someone you trust. Ask them to give you two, two very specific talents that you have. Watch the generalizations. We all know, ladies, that we are the caregivers. We are the givers. We take care of things and people, and a lot of times it's expected of us. That's what we grew up believing. That's what we've incorporated into our life so far. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are a giver, I invite you to look at specifically what part of giving you're good at. If someone says to you, oh, well, we want you to volunteer because you're so good at being a volunteer, ask them to clarify what that means to them. You can ask the person who says this to you, well, you, you want me to volunteer again. You say I'm good at being a volunteer. What does that mean? What about being a volunteer am I good at? And hopefully, the person will be able to be specific. And if not, then you might want to step back and think about that, too. Maybe they are just trying to flatter you because they know they need volunteers and they know you've stepped up to the plate time and time again. And they, they think by flattering you and saying, you're so good at this, we need you, that you will give in and join. If they can't give you some specifics as to what makes you a good volunteer, what makes you a good caregiver of someone else, think about that. Think about that as being too general and step away. Question everything that you have been taking for granted about what you do, about who you are and who you are not in terms of being special, in terms of having talents, in terms of having skills.